This paper is 9 by 12 and actually at 400 grit. I normally paint on 500 grit, but had this um, sheet lying around and so I thought I would use it. One thing that I have recently learned about UART Dark, which is what this, um, this specific line of the UART brand is called, is that the lower the grit or the lower the number of grit, I guess I should say, does appear blacker than the higher, um, the finer grit paper, like the 800 grits, um, six, 600 grit, etc. I've used this paper before and um, I've said mentioned that it's more charcoal color. This 400 grit is very, very dark. It's a little bit blacker and it has a little bit of shine to it, um, which I think will make an interesting piece. And of course, you can see the reference image. Um, this is a landscape image that has popped up over there on the left. And I am just trying to, of course, I've used the ruler to get a really flat horizon line blending it a little bit and smudging it with my finger. I want there to be softness at this horizon line, but this black paper is going to really help this piece come together because of all the black lava rock that you see in the image. Probably mentioned before that we have gotten to visit the big island of Hawaii many times. We have some friends that live there and we have gotten to go over the years for probably the past almost 15 years of visiting. Every time I go, it's harder to come back. And this is one of my favorite areas. This is actually on the Kona coast of the big island of Hawaii. Kona coast has a lot of old lava flows from when the lava was flowing on that side of the island more heavily. Of course, now it's flowing more on the Hilo side of Hawaii. But there are tons of areas where the, the sand is mixed. There's black sand, black rock, but on the Kona coast, there are are a few more white sand beaches because um, it's it's not the, the lava doesn't flow that way as much and so this black paper is just going to really help me bring out all of those different colors you can see that I've gestured in just general where the ocean is general shapes of the lava rock this is some charcoal that I'm using just to reestablish kind of the harder lines of that lava that is sticking out into the ocean. To be real conscientious of the color of the different colors of the ocean here and how in the distance there's a, a lot more deeper color, but as the water comes towards the shoreline and against the rock, there's some variation in, in color. There's greens, there's blues, there's the areas under the water that you can see some lava flowing. There's rocks sticking up everywhere here and there. And so I'm just gonna play with placement here about those elements and see what I can create. This is going to be one of those pieces where I'm working more in one area and then moving to another. So right now I'm really just focusing on the water before I start tackling the sky, something that I often do, sometimes I do the sky first and then the land. But I really just wanted to establish the shapes in this water, get the, the, get the color right. I really want this to look like as the water is coming in towards shore, I want to really convey how it becomes, at least to where I'm standing in the image, more transparent because I can see within the waves. And so that's really my main focus here right now. Adding in some darker sand color, I am gonna lighten this up eventually. And so I, I'm just putting in a good base color for the sand. I like to, tr I like usually like to do that. If I'm going to add a lighter value, I usually will add a darker value first. So there's some weight behind that value. It's not just a really lighter, too light of a value too soon because I can always blend it. I can always brush off areas to have have a little bit of variation in value in a particular area. A very limited palette here, of, especially in the, in the water section. Of course, in the majority of the lava rock that's sticking out, that's just the paper color with a little bit of charcoal. But I'm wanting, like I said, to convey objects underneath the water and that transparency. And so these, these are cooler. That's a very cool Giro that I'm using.
using a lot of harder pastels, especially in the water, because I just love the way it makes the waves and the strokes and just the little ripples show up. But I'm not really pleased with my foreground right now. I don't like where I have that big rock. Um, I don't really like the water. I don't like the sand, the sand angle. I just think it's, I just, it's not, it's accurate to the photograph, but it's not something that I'm enjoying. So I am actually going to rub it off here in a second and readjust, um, take out that main, that bottom portion of the rock and change the sand shape a little bit better. Um, so I can put more of the water up on the shoreline than, um, than it currently is right now. So I'm just brushing it off. The wonderful thing about pastels is you can change your mind anytime. Just get that tooth back, take off areas that you don't love and feel free. It's your artwork. You can do whatever you want. And so I'm putting in some pretty cool neutral light green right here because that blue that I had put in with that new pastel, I want that to signify kind of the deeper shadow of that rock that's sticking up above it and also show there's rocks below. And so I didn't have enough space for that with the way the, that I had had painted that rock in there and the sand going kind of all the way across. And so I'm just going to kind of readjust here and see what I can come up with in some tinier little rocks they're really just playing right now and that's something that I want to encourage you guys to do if you don't know how to do something if you don't know exactly how to get it a certain effect like rocks underwater that's not something that I've painted a lot honestly but I am trying something new here and so I'm letting myself go from doing it perfectly the first time or feeling the pressure that if, if I don't do right the first time, then I'm just gonna waste the entire painting session and be frustrated at myself and walk away and still not know how to do it. And so I'm thinking of this paper as malleable. It's, it's reusable. It's something that I can always brush off and start over again, especially with this black paper. There's not a lot of underpainting. Or there's no underpainting on this at all, but it's easy to brush off and readjust color pretty constantly. Okay, now I'm wanting to add some information to the sky. I feel satisfied enough with the sea and the sand and the rocks to start adding this this information. So this is just a very light kind of mauve pink new pastel because there is some pink in the sky of course that I'm wanting to highlight. This is a Richeson also. I'm going to really be playing with the colors here. It's a pretty dramatic sky but I want to play with it and add even more drama. Using a little bit of foam to sweep in especially right there at the horizon line. I want that to be a really soft edge and not a very hard edge yet. I like soft clouds in the beginning because I can always make harder marks later on. I am going to add in some blues and some other colors. It's kind of fun. It's kind of fun to, to think of the possibilities of what you can do with toned paper to actually use the paper as elements. I'm using this is a Terry Ludwig that I'm using which is a little bit softer I'm doing a lot of hand blending here now I'm going to start working on the more of the horizon line where the light is a little bit brighter um, adding in just some really bright values of, of course bringing my ruler up because water always finds level I say that a lot and so I you I like to use a ruler especially in an ocean scene whenever whenever I need a really really flat horizon line and I will sometimes blend my finger across that mark just so it's a softer edge, but I still want it to be a very straight edge. Gently going to add just some more color into the sky, up, up into this area of the cloud. Of course, the, the light is kind of at an angle here. The storm formation takes up the majority, so I'm not really going to be putting any more light at all into the really the, that entire half of the piece at the top. Um, I do want there to be some character in these clouds, but I, I want to keep this really dark and moody, and so I'm the main light sources are 
just going to be there at the horizon line and they're right at that angle um, where the orange is in that cloud. Adding in some, starting to add in some little reflective light at the shoreline where that orange and that ma magenta mauvish glow is touching this water. Using a new pastel that, you know, this is the same new pastel that I used up in the sky. It's just kind of a soft gray mauve, a very light value. I love it for ocean scenes for reflective light. I use it whenever I have painted oceans. I'm always pulling that one out just because it really lends a really beautiful effect. Of course, now these are always fun marks to make, which are little crashing waves. And the, they're very simple little marks. I tap in a horizontal line with the lighter value that I'm using and just kind of wiggle it up and down. I'm not drawing it. I'm not using the pinpoint or using it all like a pencil. I'm using the wide side of this pastel. And you can see, you know, sometimes I'm flicking up, depending, and I'm, I'm trying to break up that mark so it's not a solid line. I'm looking at the reference photos here, but then I'm also just listening to my own inner artist voice about where I want these to be. Continuing to add some flavor and character into the sky with some a little brighter peach color. Also, I want to swipe it across the far left horizon line. I do think that there should be a glow, and there is one in the reference photo. And so I'm just gently making gentle marks using colors that I want to represent. Now this is a Richeson mauve, and I am going to slightly put, put it in there at that low horizon to show that there is a little bit of glow to the sky in this in this area. These final little marks are always fun to put in, but this is really where I start to slow down. I'm making very, very small adjustments throughout the piece and really just stepping back. I like to say I don't squint my eyes, but I do unfocus my vision to almost look at it through a wavy glass lens to really see that detail. These tiny little marks over that water making this, you can see me flipping my pastel there thinking to myself, hmm, what do, what do I do next? But showing very small marks right there at the bottom of that, of that rock that the, the water is pushing up against. always love adding these final little highlights. I decided to brighten up just a few of the waves off in the distance and against the rocks. This is a Terry Ludwig from his True Lights collection. I do believe this is a very, very light blue, but it's not a pure white. a little bit of the texture out of the sky in that area um, just blending in with my pipe foam cover up a little bit of the texture of the black paper since this is toothier than I am used to you know 400 grit versus 500 grit would seem like it's not that big of a difference but it is quite a bit toothier this 400 grit but I wanting to soften a little of it in the clouds just so it doesn't take away there's not two stories going on it's not the clouds and the water but it's one cohesive painting loved painting this scene for you I'm not on a vacation this year at the beach so I'm just painting my own vacations <laughs> and good memories of fun times with family and friends. 
shooting the cruise at Pine Trees on the big island of Hawaii. Hi everybody, it's Bethany and I'm here in my studio. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you learned something today, I would love it if you would give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and also click that little notification bell so you can know whenever I have a new video coming up. If you'd also love to support this content coming out, I would love it if you would consider visiting my Patreon page. The link is below. I'm so excited to be bringing these lessons to you weekly and I hope you're excited too. Bye.